Hello, welcome to the Streamlining Your Identity IQ Deployments with APIs. My name is Zach Adams and I'm a senior IAM architect specializing in DevOps and SRE with Instrumental Identity. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can use APIs to automate your deployment process and leverage shell scripts to um, standardize your deployment process, ensuring that um, you have a smooth deployment every single time, speed up your deployments, so that way you're not spending your after hours going through and managing your deployments, and as well as uh, set yourself up for further automation in the future, such as uh, implementing CI-CD pipelines. Um, the tools that you need to build this level of automation here are likely already live in your environment if you're not already using them. Today I'm going to show you exactly what those tools are. So, keeping with this methodical approach that we're going to be going through here, we're going to look at uh, first the problems that are introduced by uh, not using an automated deploy process. Um, we'll show you, uh, we'll take inventory of the API tools that you likely have available to you within your environment. Um, we'll show you how to design an automated solution for the actual problem. And then we'll show you a live demo and a couple of approaches you can take when building your own solution. Now, to talk about the problem here. So a very common outcome of a bad deployment is going to be something in the range of uh, late night troubleshooting, trying to figure out why my configuration settings didn't get pushed out. Um, and they can go as far as to be full outages of an environment, um, leading you to have to do very costly rollbacks. Um, and the cause for these problems are very many um, possible uh, precursors. So. Um, one of the issues that can cause these major outages is going to be um, human errors from having multiple tabs or SSH ses or sessions open during your deployment process. So whenever you're doing a deployment manually, you're likely having both a session open to your IIQ servers, um, you probably have a session open to actually clone down the latest version from your repository, and sometimes you can get a little confused going between those different um, SSH views. Um, so one of our major issues right there, adding more time to your deployment. Um, another uh, possible uh, issue that leads to this result is uh, manually importing your config files one by one. So if you're not using the SSB process or if you are not actually doing any kind of automation right now and you're just importing config files, the XML files via IIQ's uh, web UI, you're likely to forget um, files here and there. So you'll be wondering to yourself, why didn't my application definition go out? Um, again, a result of a human error right there. Um, you can also have errors that are a result of uh, manually typing in commands wrong. So um, say for example, you are trying to go through and do a imp or SP init custom import from the IIQ console. Um, you know, maybe your developers don't know that you're supposed to be using that particular um, custom XML uh, to do your deployments and instead maybe even runs a full import all, uh, blowing away any changes that existed in your UI. Um, that lack of standardization there can cause um, some pretty costly issues, especially whenever your repository is out of sync with what's actually in your actual live environment. And then finally, rollbacks can require a lengthy and more laborious process whenever you're doing this manually. So if you do have a botched deployment for whatever reason, um, if you're doing this in a manual manner, you're going to have to go through, say, if you're doing a manual import of file by file, um, it's going to take you a very long time to roll back to where your environment was before doing the deployment. So all of these issues here kind of have a similar root being the human element. Um, by automating, you can get around this problem right here. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at building out the solution here. So let's first off take a moment to make some assumptions. Um, so, one of the assumptions that I have here is that you're probably using a Tomcat application uh, server to actually host your Identity IQ instance. This is the preferred method of actually hosting Identity IQ. Um, and along with that, you're likely also set up with Tomcat Manager as well. It's part of the default installation process when installing Tomcat on most Linux servers. Um, and the thing is that a lot of folks don't actually use this application by default. It's generally disabled or only accessible from the local host. Um, it's very easy to set this up though and then gives you access to a very powerful set of APIs that you can then use to actually manage your war file deployments of the Identity IQ application. Next thing that I'm going to assume is that you already have network con or connectivity and firewall access between uh, your development or your deployment host and your application servers. So, 
Um, if you're going to be making API calls over to your dev, QA, or prod environment, you do need to have the ability to make curl calls to those application servers. Um, we're going to also make the assumption that you're using the standard services build process. So this is the preferred methodology for maintaining your Identity IQ project within a uh, source control platform. Um, if you aren't already doing so, you're just keeping loose XML files, uh, I would highly recommend going through and loading yourself up um, a version of SSB in your repository and moving your config files over there. Um, next, we're going to also assume that you have the ability to view your Catalina logs. This is kind of a, a requirement for any Identity IQ developer. And then we're also going to assume that you're using some kind of source control. You can't just have a file share where you're holding all these files. It's important that you're going through and storing your configuration files for Identity IQ within something that tracks change management and something that you can actually tag releases with. This makes sure that you keep your project nice, clean, and orderly. So let's talk about the solution a little bit here. So the solution I'm going to show you today involves several shell scripts, right? Um, it is using that Tomcat Manager script API to uh, go through and handle the war file deployment to clear the Tomcat caches to um, basically perform a lot of the web app maintenance that you would need to do, just like I said, leveraging a standard REST API call. Um, the Tomcat Manager application, additionally, the script will also use um, some other libraries that are available to the OS. So for example, we are also pulling in the uh, latest files from your source control, in this case, Git. Um, the script will actually do a Git pull, making sure that you have the latest files on your build server before you actually do the deployment. Um, and this can also be uh, SVN too, if your organization uses SVN. You may also need to have um, cloud CLI packages to perform the deployment if you're hosting within a cloud environment. And then finally, another suggested library that you need to have installed is uh, Ants. This is uh, the main build process used by SSB to uh, build your war file before doing a deployment. Um, and then as mentioned before, Tomcat that does need to be set up um, both for the application server and also uh, Tomcat Manager as well. And to show you kind of how to set up Tomcat Manager, it's a very simple process. Um, like I said, Tomcat Manager comes pre-installed on your uh, application server whenever you install the default Linux Tomcat application. So underneath your web apps folder on your server, you'll see a manager folder available to you. Now this is that Tomcat manager application. It has a couple of operating modes. There's a GUI mode that allows you to manage um, deployed applications from a web user or web user interface, uh, as well as what we're going to be using here today, which is the API set. So uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have uh, a whitelist entry added to go ahead and allow access from your build server uh, to the Tomcat Manager application. So in this example here, our build server is our application server. We're going to be running the build and deploy process on the same machine. So we just want to make sure that we have that IP address included um, in that configuration file there. So again, that's going to be located underneath the manager application in the meta INF folder in the context.xml file. The second thing that you're going to need to do is declare a service account that will then be used uh, when making the API calls to Tomcat Manager. So this is something that is unique only to the Tomcat Manager application. This isn't something that lives within Identity IQ. Um, where you define this is underneath the Tomcat config and Tomcat users folder. What you'll do is you'll declare the role name of manager script. Like I said, there's also a role of manager hyphen GUI, which allows you to have access to the web user interface, but we're not going to focus on that here today. Just put manager script and then define a username and password for that Tomcat user that'll be making those API calls. So you can store this password hashed as well and have it only decrypted during runtime. That's totally fine. But once you've gone through and made these changes to those two files, you should be able to go ahead and do a curl command um, to list the web applications that are available to you. This is the final command that you'll see at the bottom of this slide here. Um, and you'll see a list of both the Tomcat manager application as well as the identity IQ application. So moving into the actual shell scripts here. Our shell script solution consists of three shell scripts. It's going to be deploy.sh. This is going to set your environment variables and also do your uh, git pull for you, so grabbing those latest configuration artifacts from the repository. There's going to be deploy main, so this is the actual menu options. We have a nice uh, text user interface in our solution here that gives the user a uh, 
list of choices to choose from, from deploying uh, the WAR file to doing um, custom object imports, and also uh, database extensions as well. So uh, all of this is living within the deploy main.sh. So these two files here can be stored with your project in the GitLab repository. But then we also have a third one called deploy secrets. Now this is gonna be where you store certain credentials that you'll use during your deployment. So your SP admin user that you're using to deploy those configuration objects uh, to your environment. Uh, it's gonna have your passwords for uh, AWS uh, if you're hosting in that environment there. And you can also uh, modify this script to uh, dynamically pull those passwords instead of statically storing them within that SH script. But if you're going through and using just the script alone, deploysecrets.sh, you want to make sure that this one is not stored in your source control. That way you're not leaking out passwords to anyone or credentials to anyone and have it only stored on the application server. So moving into a live demo here, what I'm going to be doing is running the script to pull from the repo to start. It's going to build a war file. I'll show you uh, basically a UI change that will occur. Um, by doing a war build, then we'll do a, uh, a SP init custom based import. So importing a custom object into that environment and then uh, wrap it up with a uh, database extension with some custom attributes. So moving over into our view here, you can see that we have our basic installation of identity IQ. Now this is being hosted in the cloud um, right now, very vanilla. Nothing you know, too out of the ordinary here. We have a couple of plugins that we've developed that we have available in here, but besides that, um, just a very simple demo. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am going to log into that IIQ server here. So, connect to the server, and then switch over to our root account. And then underneath here, you'll see that we have a repository called Dev Days 2024. So this is our SSB project directory here. It's going to have all of our config settings. You're probably already familiar with how this structure is already set up. But you'll see the deploy.sh, the deploy secrets, and then the deploy main file right here. So in order to run the deployment process, we're going to go ahead and start by running the deploy.sh script. So you see it's pulling the latest code from the Git repository, and then you're presented with that text user interface. So as I said before, you have a list of choices that you can choose from in this deployment process. One of them is going to be the init custom-based or import, the uh, deployment of the an updated identity IQ.war file. This is going to deploy UI changes, custom classes, things of that nature. The ability to extend the database. So if you have a custom DDL that needs to be generated for those uh, custom attributes, you can run that from here too. And then we also have um, a combination of both uh, that you can run as well. But we're gonna go ahead and get started with deploying the war file here. And before I do that, we're gonna go ahead and enable custom scripts to run to allow a UI change to occur. I've made a couple of little changes here that you guys will be able to see. So underneath our build properties, go ahead and enable custom scripts to run during that build process. Save that. We'll boot up the deploy script again. And then run that deployment. So right now it's running through the standard war build process that is uh, an ant job within the SSB uh, uh, framework that SailPoint provides. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. This is something, like I said, you probably already have available in your environment. And if you're not using it already, um, it's there for you. Now, while this is going through and running, I'd like to go ahead and show you guys a uh, what's happening behind the scenes here. So, taking a look at our script, and these will be made available after this presentation here today, so you can play with it yourself. But in that deploy.sh uh, script, we're going through and grabbing um, that latest version from the repository. Um, we're going through and setting our Java home files, extending our uh, DDL files, everything that 
uh, we would need as a precursor to actually doing that war build we're declaring in this deploy file here. Now during that deploy main, like I said, this is where the actual touch user or the uh, text user interface is located at. It's where we're defining our different options that are available to us. Um, and then handling uh, things like, for example, changing the IIQ executable over to um, a, uh, a uh, e executable script. Um, and then we're also going through and handling the move of the war file over to uh, the application directory, um, doing the actual init custom import right here, reloading the war file using, again, that Tomcat Manager API here. So this is that API that I'm talking about that's available to you likely right now. Um, same thing for actually deploying the war file, making that call to actually deploy that war file over to your uh, application server. Um, basically, this is where the meat and potatoes really lives for this deployment script here. And then, of course, our secrets here, this is where we're actually storing our password, our host that we're deploying to. But that's basically the extent of the script operations here. So while this is continuing to run, Another thing that you can continue to add on to this is if you wanted to run any particular tests that operate beforehand. So um, if you wanted to go through and lint your code, um, this script is basically a precursor to further automation that you can run from within like a CI CD pipeline. Um, as it currently stands, the uh, script asks for you know input from a user, but you can actually write your own fully automated deploy.sh script that doesn't ask for those prompts. If you have a more rigid deployment strategy, you're doing the same thing every single time. Um, that's certainly an option right there too. You can go through and um, in cases of where you wanna have a little bit more control or you're deploying to a remote server, you can build this into an Ansible playbook as well which will allow you to operate off of a remote machine to handle the build process and push those out using Ansible's uh, copy uh, modules. And then this allows you to also deploy to multiple servers at the same time simultaneously. So you'll see here, we have two hosts in our environment. They're only deploying one at a time, and that's totally fine. It gives you kind of a rolling restart, but using Ansible, you can actually deploy both of them at the same time. Um, but with this running right here, it'll be uploading our final war file and unpacking it. And then after this, what we're gonna go ahead and run is a uh, import custom uh, object import. So basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a custom object that we've made called uh, example. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you this as soon as it finishes loading. We'll go ahead and clear our cache right now to go ahead and show you those UI changes from our war deployment. So underneath history, recent history. Okay. We'll wait for that to finish deploying for the other side too, so that way we can access it. Okay. And with that, it's still deploying at the moment. So with the Tomcat Manager script itself, um, we're not just handling the unpacking of the war file whenever it gets over to the environment. So the reason why it's taking a little bit longer right now is it's actually uploading that war file beforehand too. So it's not like um, you're going through and just copying over a file and unpacking it. This Tomcat Manager API allows you to actually upload the application files directly from the API call. So now that that's done, we'll go ahead and load our environment back up. Wait for it to come back alive. This is always the fun part of deployments, whenever you're waiting to see if your changes went live or not. Okay. Go ahead and check our logs to make sure everything looked all right. So again, it's important to have log access on your application server as well. Serial. 
If you don't know where your logs are at, they're underneath your Tomcat Apache folder in the logs folder. And those errors right there are just from actually restarting the IIQ server. But this is always a tricky part of actually doing live demos here. But in most cases, what will usually happen is that the environment will come back up available to you. And you'll be able to go ahead and run your next deployment um, script command. So in this case, we would go through and run uh, the import custom. XML command, uh, allowing us to kind of just go through and import, like I said, that custom object. So in this case, it would have been an example uh, custom object uh, that we can then see was, you know, created. Um, and this will import, you know, not just a single object, but all of the objects that it detects new within your repository. Import custom doesn't blow away any changes, it only overwrites changes for objects that are already present within your environment. Um, the other thing that we would also do after these base deployment steps would be expanding the um, custom column, so using that expand DDL script call to add in your custom attribute columns for, say, if you had um, custom attributes for uh, your identity objects. Um, this will go through and not just generate that uh, DDL script for you, um, but it will also run it against your environment. So generally speaking, you would have to go into IIQ after uploading the HBM files, and then um, we'll also go through and uh, after generating the DDL script, so you'd go into IIQ console, generate your custom expansion DDL script, and then run it against your DB directly. This handles all of that for you using the IIQ console uh, script here. But uh, with that there, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us here at uh, Dev Days 2024. Um, and understand that this scripting approach here can be expanded to many, many more aspects of your deployment process. Like I said, we, uh, we personally use it for CICD pipelines, and we'll be talking about that here in a uh, later panel. Um, this is your first step, though, to truly automating your uh, infrastructure for Identity IQ. With that, again, my name is Zach Adams. Thank you so much for joining us here today.